the 10 biggest Demoman crimes committed in team-based defence fought twice. Everyone has to start somewhere. You learn from your mistakes and you get better. But sometimes even experienced players make mistakes. So in this video, we're going to be going over those bad habits and common mistakes which once you know about are easy to avoid. Some of which you only see from beginners and some of which I still make after over 2000 hours in the game. Just so you know, we're going to be focusing on this guy and not so much these guys, for this video at least. We're also not going to be looking in too much detail at individual weapons, but the majority of the Demoman's arsenal is viable. I would just advise that if you're new and you're unsure, the stock weapons and the Quickie Bomb Launcher and Iron Bomber are always good safe options, whereas the Loose Cannon, Scottish Resistance and Lock and Load are more suited to certain situations. But before we get too deep into this video, I would like to say a massive thank you to my sponsor, Frag Pro Shooter. Frag Pro Shooter is a game designed for mobile with over 30 million players. You build a team of five characters and play against other people, trying to destroy their bunkers as quickly as possible. Once you have destroyed their bunkers, you can then attack their tower to try and win the game. There are loads of characters to choose from, inspired by pop culture, each with their own abilities, which look really cool. And now there is a new 2v2 mode where you can build a team with friends or a random partner, each of you choosing three characters from your deck and working together to win the game. Check down below for a free reward just for you. Just click on the link in the description and away you go. Oh! Number one, taking full damage or getting more height than you need during a sticky jump. When you first start sticky jumping, you tend to launch yourself at about perhaps a 45 degree angle, or sometimes even steeper. But with experience, you can learn to reduce how much height you get, with the ultimate goal of reducing how much full damage you take as much as possible with every single jump. For example, instead of putting a bomb here, you could try putting one here. You rarely see demos jumping using walls and it can be very useful. Or instead of detonating immediately, you could try detonating a bit later. Or instead of crouch jumping, for less height, you don't need to crouch at all. And this last one is one that took me a while to feel comfortable with, just simply because crouch jumping is such a force of habit, it's like muscle memory at this point. It takes a lot of fine tuning to avoid fall damage as you're jumping around the map, and sometimes it is unavoidable. But the better you get at picking the right jump for the job, the more fall damage you'll avoid. A more advanced technique worth mentioning is to use a ramp serve at the end of your jump to negate any fall damage at all. The roof on Suijin and Harvest are two spots I love to use for this purpose and it's really fun to do as well. But there are loads of other locations you can do ramp slides as well, you just gotta go out there and find them. Calculated. Number two, not reloading. Guilty as charged. With your sticky bomb launcher especially, it's easy to forget to reload as you have such a large clip and you get into that I'll do it later mentality. And this is especially the case because reloading just takes so long for the demo man, especially if you're completely empty. But it's important to note that mid fight, often the right move is not to reload at that given moment. Sometimes just switching weapons is your best option. But at the end of a fight, I often make the mistake of getting a bit carried away and jumping straight back into the action without taking a few seconds to make sure I'm reloaded back up. And remember, you're super vulnerable when reloading, so it's always worth taking the time to put down a precautionary sticky in case you're attacked. I hate you campers! Number three, camping. This one you see all of the time. A demo man camping a doorway or choke point, waiting to get that sweet right click. They get a kill and immediately set up another trap. Sure, the kills are valuable, but between kills, while you're sitting there and waiting for someone to walk into your trap, you're not contributing to the game at all, and probably not having too much fun either. Don't get me wrong, traps should be used, especially in certain situations such as defending objectives of course, but with other traps it's often best just to get one or two kills and then move on, both for your sanity as well as for the fact that it won't be long before the enemy learns to take another route, flanks you and takes you out. On the flip side, never using traps can be equally problematic, and this is something I'm sometimes guilty of, but I would argue it's the lesser of the two evils. So don't use traps, but do use traps, okay? Is that clear? Good. 
As for spawn camping, well, this does technically provide a lot of value, but everyone's gonna think you're a bit of a douche, so I'll let you guys be the judge of that one. Number four, not charging shots. Did you know you can hold down left click when using the sticky bomb launcher to charge a shot and launch it further? Of course, for those of you who know this, it sounds obvious, but you'll be surprised at how many comments I see from people who didn't know that this was a thing. And not to make use of this ability is a huge mistake because you're losing out on so much value. And this is even more the case with the quickie bomb launcher, of course, that deals additional damage when you charge up your shots. Demo Man is not really known for being able to dish out damage at range, so you can really easily surprise and pressure enemies by using this mechanic. It's a really good idea to get into the habit of always charging up a shot as you are approaching a fight, because you never know what you're gonna see in front of you and what you're gonna need it for. Number five, overkill or using too many stickies. This is a pet peeve of mine. When I see a demo man standing still, slowly laying a trap and using all eight stickies in the exact same place, it angers me. First of all, three or four stickies will normally do the job in most cases. And going back to the point about camping, in most cases you really want to just keep moving, perhaps quickly throwing down a trap and going on your merry little way. But if you really want to have the most epic trap that has ever existed, then at least spread your stickies out. Eight stickies within a two inch radius will have the same effect as four stickies in a two inch radius, in almost any situation at least. Whereas by spreading them out, you're covering a much larger area and so giving yourself a much better chance of dealing damage and catching more enemies in your trap. What did I miss? Number six not aiming, or in other words, spamming. Now this is a huge one. Because Demo Man's weapons are explosive, they can be quite forgiving. And so, as you're learning the class, this can mean you form bad habits. You might find, for example, that throwing four pipes into the distance without much thought means you often get one or two kills. And so you continue to do this and therefore never really put too much thought into your shots. Or alternatively, this is something that can occur when you're confronted by an enemy and you end up spamming all of your shots, throwing them out as quickly as possible without much thought. Whereas if you learn to try and consider each shot, be patient and hold off on shooting until the optimum moment, then you will start to get way more value out of your grenades and stickies. This probably applies a little bit more heavily to the grenade launcher because it can mean the difference between 100 damage and zero damage. And if you're interested in learning more about this topic, then I recommend an awesome video by Tufty TV himself on how to hit more pipes. It's worth noting that spamming can be very useful in certain situations and you see the highest level teams doing it. If you were to watch sixes, for example, at invite level, they will often try to apply constant pressure to a choke point, but it's always very intentional and there's a time and place for it. You just need to know when is the right time to spam and when's the right time to start considering each shot. Number seven not switching weapons. I don't mean switching weapon loadouts, I mean switching to primary or to secondary. I've noticed that some players will either have their primary or secondary out by default, and whatever the situation they encounter, they will use that weapon until their ammo is depleted, and then switch weapons. But the Demo Man is not like other classes, in that he essentially has two primary weapons, each one equally useful depending on the situation. For example, coming across a scout in the open, you may want to use a sticky to try and control that fight. Whereas if you see a sentry gun in the distance, grenades might be the best option. And of course, in some occasions, a combination of the two can be really good too. For example, throwing out a sticky bomb or two and then detonating right as you shoot a grenade to achieve some nice juicy burst damage. Number eight, getting deflected. Pyros have discovered the right click button. It's a problem, I know. And when you first encounter a pyro player, well, it's impossible to tell how good they're gonna be. Normally, you take a shot at them, it's all you can do to see what happens, and you'll learn soon enough if they're a god at air blasting. But if a pyro is able to consistently deflect your shots, then you need to start changing something up. Many demos will just continue to fire at the same pace and expect one of their shots to miraculously get the kill. But some pyros just don't miss the right click probably because they installed cheats, I'm just saying. So in this case, you've got a few options. The first thing you can do is change up your pattern and start firing at awkward intervals. Another option is when you would normally fire, you can try and bait out the air blast by doing a kind of jiggle. 
technical term. And sometimes the best option is to switch to your stickies, which give you way more flexibility in terms of when you detonate. Number nine, ignoring sentries. Sentry guns shut down games. Demo men shut down sentries. So do your job. Whatever position a sentry gun may be in, once you know it's there, it should be easy to take out, unless the entire team are doing an awesome job of protecting it. So make taking out sentry guns your responsibility and make this your priority. Some classes such as Scout or Pyro are having to rely on classes like you and Soldier and Spy to do exactly this. So if you see a sentry gun, it's probably the most important target to take out. Number 10. Going demo night. <laughs> I'm joking, uh, or am I? Of course I'm joking, but am I though? The demo night can of course be viable, but there will always be situations where switching is the right move. A good example is a big fat nest of sentry guns. However much you love that sword man, he isn't much help against three turtling NGs. So in situations like this, it can be worth switching for just a couple of minutes to help break that hold. There are also certain maps and game modes that potentially aren't as fitting for the demo night, but at the end of the day, it's a game you should be playing whatever you enjoy. If that means chopping down sentry guns, with your sword, so be it. There are some things we didn't cover today, such as laying traps in plain sight. Sometimes this can be useful, but often hiding them is a better option. I thought not understanding damage ramp up could be an interesting one, but it doesn't really affect your gameplay that much. Either you're setting a trap, which won't be used for five seconds, or you're not. But it's definitely worth making sure you understand this. And again, if you wanna learn more about this, check out one of my previous videos. Being too aggressive is a good one, but kind of applies to any class. Not making good use of health packs because you're so mobile and can sticky jump around. Sometimes it's better to go for a health pack than call for medic. And finally, and most importantly, not wearing a beard. Shake my head, so sad. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Be sure to smash some buttons, follow my discords, and join the Twitters. Thank you all so much for your support, especially to my patrons and Twitch subs who allow videos like this to be made. Let me know in the comments below the biggest mistake you've ever made in your life, ideally relating to Demoman.